Okay, let's get started. So this is being uh, recorded, everyone, just so you know, if you miss any parts, um, we'll definitely share the recording. So good afternoon, everybody. Uh, so my name is Cassie, and uh, thank you for joining us for our professional learning um, info session. Today, we're going to be sharing with you um, a particular workshop that will be offered through the Earth Institute's non-degree programs um, starting in March. Um, the workshop is uh, Climate Family Foundations and it's going to be co-led and taught by uh, Simon Mason and Lisa Goddard of the International Research Institute for Climate and Society. Uh, before they jump in uh, to give everyone an overview of the topics that are going to be covered in the workshop, um, I just wanted to talk a little bit more about the non-degree programs at the Earth Institute. Um, so we're offering these um, in sort of our inaugural uh, academic year. Uh, we, pi we are piloting piloting a series of workshops um, for adult learners um, under professional learning, um, really meant uh, to help supplement um, or provide learning for um, working professionals who are either looking to um, add some professional development and additional learning into their, uh, into, um, into their sort of uh, careers or for those looking to perhaps pivot or change to a more climate science or sustainability career. Um, these are all great, um, sort of, these are all of our past participants um, where sort of their, their backgrounds have been in. Um, these are going to be very small sessions. Um, they're all online for this academic year. And it's a great opportunity um, to learn from the same faculty who actually teach in our distinguished uh, um, full degree programs, um, but in short sort of intensive sessions. Um, these are all going to be 15 hour workshops, 15 hours in total over a certain number of weeks um, around a very specific, uh, but very relevant uh, climate topic. Um, so there's no official sort of transcripts. There's no sort of huge assignments and, and lots of uh, lots of homework, um, no official grading. It's really just a fantastic opportunity uh, to learn directly from our experts um, and to network with uh, similar uh, individuals with similar career backgrounds um, and interests. And uh, you get to, um, everyone receives a certificate of participation at the end of the workshop. Um, and you are part of um, our Earth Institute to sort of family of, of alumni or students. Um, and what's really exciting uh, right now, um, if some of you, I'm not sure if um, uh, many of you have heard, but the Earth Institute is actually uh, in the progress uh, or in the process of uh, integrating into and establishing a Columbia Climate School. Um, so this, this workshop in particular is especially relevant uh, as we try and bring more of our climate science and research and knowledge and try to engage more individuals, um, both within the US and around the world um, around uh, climate uh, and climate climate change. And so this is, um, this is going to be a fantastic opportunity. Um, I'm going to stop talking and hand it over to the co-instructors. If you do have any questions throughout the session, feel free to use the Q&A box. It's been in enabled for you to ask questions. I will keep an eye uh, on the Q&A box throughout the session. If you have any questions about the schedule, logistics, fees, uh, feel free to type your questions in there and I will answer those. Um, and we're are going to, I'm going to hand it over to Simon and Lisa to tell you exactly what you will be learning in this particular workshop. So go ahead, Simon and Lisa. Thank you, Cassie. Um, I'll go first. Um, so I'm Lisa. Um, I just wanted to uh, introduce myself before we get into the to workshop itself. Uh, my research areas are on climate variability and its prediction. This is a big area for the IRI this way. IRI, uh, where Simon and I both work. Um, I am the former director of the IRI up until recently, and uh, I have served on advisories of the World Climate Research Program, the National Academy of Sciences, and a few others. Um, I also uh, was very involved in the Climate and Society Master's Program that um, Cassie mentioned, the Columbia Climate School. The Climate and Society Master's Program will be the first degree program um, brought into the climate school. And I was one that uh, helped develop the course on climate dynamics there. So some of the information that we'll talk about in the workshop 
is drawing from, from that material. Um, Simon. Yes, yeah, so by elimination, I'm Simon. Uh, I'm uh, also a climate scientist at the, at the IFI. Most of my uh, research is on uh, how to make uh, forecasts for the next few weeks to few months, uh, and also how to calculate or uh, identify whether those forecasts are any good. Um, that's called uh, forecast verification. Uh, I also teach on the Climate and Society course. I teach the uh, course on quantitative methods or statistical analysis of, of climate data. We won't be doing any uh, complicated uh, uh, maths or statistics in, in this course. We're going to try and keep it uh, uh, equation uh, free. Um, in addition to teaching on the Climate and Society course, uh, I've also worked extensively with the World Meteorological Organization, um, uh, providing training for national meteorological services on how to make forecasts for the next few months and uh, providing climate services generally. I think I've trained every single country in the world, except for a few in the Russian speaking bloc and uh, I'm busy learning Russian, so hopefully I can tick off everybody. Um, what we're going to do in this course is, is to provide a, a conceptual introduction to climate. Uh, let me share my screen. Uh, <clears throat> as I said, we're going to try and keep, uh, uh, keep the material uh, uh, mathematics free. Uh, but we're going to try and give you an understanding of how climate works and uh, with the objectives of uh, enabling you to make sense of um, uh, stories about the climate that you might hear in the news. So what we will do is we will collect uh, <coughs> during the during the course, um, we'll uh, collect news items that appear. It's a very interesting season, um, uh, March and, and April. Uh, it's moving into the hot season in South Asia when we have uh, extreme heat waves sometimes. Um, it's time of year in the US when we typically get most tornadoes, uh, etc. So what we'll try and do is we'll try and make the course topical. Uh, if there are regional interest from the participants, we will, uh, we will uh, try to focus on that. We're, the course is designed to be, uh, to be flexible. But uh, just as a, these are uh, old examples now, but uh, just to illustrate the kind of uh, <coughs> items that you might see in the news, uh, um, El Nino will be a, a major theme of the course. Uh, we'll discuss uh, in quite a bit of detail what that is, how it works, how we can forecast it and why it's so important. Uh, and also, you know, why does it get blamed for um, <coughs> everything from uh, <coughs> garbage issues in Kenya to sporting issues in, in, in the US? There was an item in the news today uh, that's just appeared about the ozone hole. Uh, there are claims that the uh, ozone hole has now been uh, uh, filled. The ozone hole uh, problem has been fixed, and we'll be discussing uh, we'll be discussing uh, such items uh, uh, as well. So, one of the main things that we'll be focusing on is what's uh, a, a diagram such as this, which is trying to illustrate what we call the climate system. So these are all the components that make weather and, uh, and climate work. <coughs> uh, this is a highly simplified diagram of a, of a very complex system. And so although a lot of the topics that we'll be discussing uh, are, are fairly complicated uh, 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 ideas, we're going to try and present them in as simple language as possible. Um, we will uh, explain uh, uh, complex climate processes, uh, making reference to um, experiences that uh, you uh, 
uh, encounter in your everyday life. So just as one example, for those of you who are uh, perhaps in the northeast of the US or somewhere uh, in, in, in the uh, winter latitudes right now, um, if you go outside, it will almost certainly feel very cold. But if you're able to stand in the sunshine uh, and there's not too much wind, the sun will make you feel actually quite warm, even though the air is very cold. And the important climate principle here is that with, with very few exceptions, the sun does not heat the air. The sun heats the earth and it's the earth that heats the air. And <clears throat> that's what's happening to us. We're like the earth. The sun can heat us, but the sun is not heating. The important climate principle is this, the, the air is heated by the earth, not by the sun. And I'll, I'll hand over to, to Lisa, who will expand on why that is such an important climate principle. We, we will yeah, discuss thanks. this topic in more detail in session two. Yeah, thanks, Simon. So we'll we'll start out really talking about um, the Earth's mean temperature or average temperature. Um, this is really well described by the natural greenhouse effect. Um, and there are a lot of schematics out there to describe the greenhouse effect. I'm going to show you three of them here. Um, they're quite varied um, and they can be very confusing, even wrong sometimes. So, so here's three, this is the first one. Um, this might look familiar like other uh, schematics of the greenhouse effect that you've seen in the past, um, but it's also got some weird stuff going on. It looks like all the greenhouse gases are, are way in the upper part of the atmosphere. Um, this might explain why there tends to be some confusion around the issue of global warming and the ozone hole, for example. Um, if we scroll down to the next one, um, this doesn't even look like Earth, really. Um, there's a sun and something going on, grass below maybe. Um, it doesn't describe any processes and it sort of suggests in the tiny text that the atmosphere is mostly composed of greenhouse gases, which is untrue. Um, and if we go down to the third one, this is a, a little bit closer to um, really describing what's going on. Um, it's more accurate in its description, but what the heck is going on with, with all these little uh, yellow arrows to the right of that figure? Um, so we, we will unpack that. We'll cover the processes that are at work in even this most fundamental aspect of Earth's climate um, so that um, you're able to describe them accurately. Um, we'll step through, get toward get to the issue of climate variability. So why does the this mean climate that we have vary um, over time. And um, as Simon mentioned, the uh, El Nino-La Nina phenomenon is a really important part of that. So that will be one of the modes of variability um, that we're talking about. Uh, what you're seeing in this um, map is the expectations of what happens to rainfalls during a La Nina event. And we happen to actually be in a La Nina right now. Um, so the green areas are showing you where it tends to get wetter during a La Nina and the brown areas are showing you where it tends to get drier. So um, through this particular uh, session, we will talk about um, why are we getting these impacts in these regions um, in the tiny text that's difficult to see um, in the presentation. Uh, it's actually indicating seasons and those seasons of impact are not the same in all of these regions. So why is that different? Uh, will help understand that as well and the impacts from from these other uh, modes of variability that act on different time scales and in different parts of the world. Um, we'll wrap up um, after going through the, the science description of uh, the different factors that change Earth's climate on long time scales, including humans, um, to look at the the information that we get about the future, both climate forecasts for the, say, the next season or the next couple of years, all the way out to the climate change projections. So this particular graphic that you're looking at right now, there is a lot going on in this graphic. Um, but one thing that I think is interesting, it's showing you um, on the horizontal how temperature, uh, that basically globally average temperature 
change. And on the horizontal axis, it's a measure of carbon, not time. So what we really started to see in the discussions around carbon and climate lately is that um, we're, the, the conversation is getting much more focused on the total accumulated emissions of carbon, recognizing that the community uh, consensus is that 1,000 gigatons of carbon um, is what we need to stay below in order to stay below a globally averaged increase of two degrees. Uh, about 10 years ago, we're already halfway through that. And at current rates, they're suggesting that we're gonna hit that 1,000 gigatons um, in about another 20, 25 years. So there's a lot going on in this uh, diagram that I haven't even um, talked about, but it's an important diagram because it's, it's very iconic. It is from the summary of policymakers of the IPCC. So these are images that are intended to, to be used, to be understood. And we wanna make sure that, that you are able to carry this information forward and make sense of it for yourself. So we'll work through not only understanding um, the, the projections and, and what's the science behind that, but even just tools of how to um, read potentially complex scientific um, imagery that can be very helpful to, to your understanding and your uh, navigation through, through your own climate experience. Um, so with that, we'd, I think we'd like to open it up for, for questions, have some time for people to um, ask us about the course or anything that we've said. Great. Thank you both. Um, so if there are any questions from our viewers, uh, again, please use the Q&A box. So if there are particular topics you are uh, wondering um, about and whether or not they'll be covered, if you have any questions about logistics. Um, and yeah, I, I think that would be that would be really great um, to, to, to hear from, from our audience. Um, I think in the meantime, um, Simon, in terms, you know, you, you mentioned a really fun fact about yourself, which was that you've done training basically for sort of everybody. Um, and I'm curious, um, you know, what uh, types of agencies or what groups have you worked with and done the trainings for, um, and perhaps, you know, how you might bring that into the, into the workshop. Sure. So uh, I, when I mentioned my training, I was talking specifically about training of the National Meteorological Services. So specifically the uh, government entities that are um, mandated to make uh, the weather forecasts, but are also in, in almost all cases working on uh, uh, climate forecasting uh, as well. But I've also worked quite extensively with uh, um, the health community. Uh, in fact, I've recently published a book on, on uh, climate and health with uh, uh, epidemiologist, uh, uh, a former colleague. And uh, I'm working currently on uh, a, uh, uh, an initiative with the Atlantic Council to try and promote the, um, uh, the establishment of heat health uh, early warning systems. So warning systems of heat waves uh, around the world. And I've also worked quite a bit with the uh, disasters community, specifically with uh, in, uh, the Red Cross and Red Crescent. Um, they have a climate center, uh, affiliated uh, climate center that's based in the Netherlands. And uh, we've had a, a very close relationship with them, working primarily on um, trying to anticipate uh, flood uh, 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 flood um, uh, uh, flooding uh, over the next few uh, few months. Um, so I work. I work. Although I'm by training a scientist, I work primarily uh, on the interface with uh, uh, people who want to use climate information but don't have uh, the climate knowledge. And the the book that Simon mentioned that was done with the public health community. Uh, we'll be drawing on that uh, for the sessions. And in it, addition it, to it, some other articles. It is, uh, it is, uh, there is a free version available online. Uh, so uh, you, you won't be obliged to purchase uh, an expensive uh, book to do this course. So we'll, we'll give you a link to that. Great, thank you for that. Um, 
And if, I mean, for, for either of you, um, what, um, what are you, what do you think, uh, or who do you think is the sort of audience for this, for this type of workshop? Um, you know, what, what is, you know, you talked about that you'll go over sort of the, the science behind sort of the climate system. Um, also get into a little bit about um, how to use climate models and, and information. Um, so who do you think might benefit for, uh, the most from a, a workshop like this? And why do you think it's sort of important that uh, individuals do understand the, the science behind our, our climate system? You're taking that, Simon? Uh, okay. Either one so, of you. <laughs> we we may ahead, actually sorry. have different answers to this, so, okay. which is fine. <laughs> which is fine. I'm. I mean, I think uh, I'm. I'm personally uh, anticipating targeting this uh, course at at people who have no climate background, but are expected to work uh, with climate information whether that's uh, uh, using forecasts, whether that's working in advocacy uh, or policy um, <coughs> or, uh, or finance uh, even. Um, so people who, who need to understand uh, the climate information that they're working with, that they're being exposed to, uh, but perhaps especially, you know, people who are, um, struggling with the fact that a lot of climate information is either uh, inherently confusing or sometimes it's uh, contradictory um, and sometimes it's just difficult to use um, just because it, it's complicated and uh, it's difficult to simplify it. Um, so my objective is to is to give people the confidence to identify what they can believe uh, and how to use the information, interpret it properly. Well, that's an excellent answer, Simon. I really don't have too much to improve, and I definitely don't disagree with you on that. Um, yeah, I guess uh, all that I would add is um, just that most of what we hear about climate um, out, outside of the climate community itself, you know, say in the media and um, through many conversations, just seems extremely dire, sky is falling kind of stuff. And I don't think it needs to be that way. I think that there's a lot we can do to, to be better prepared and understanding is part of that. But knowing what information is credible so that we can make better decisions is also part of that. And I think knowledge is power. So in empowering you all with the information that you need to make decisions, to um, vote, to um, basically incorporate climate more dynamically into your own lives, um, this is an important body of, of information to um, be familiar with. Great, thank you. Um, so if there are any questions, we have a couple minutes left um, from, our, uh, from our attendees. Uh, feel free to type it into the, the Q&A box. Um, I think Simon, you talked a little bit about sort of, you know, we'll bring in or you'll, you two will bring in relevant sort of articles and, and news that's sort of happening around the world. Um, and if we see news uh, around climate, um, are there uh, any thoughts or plans to also invite sort of guest speakers um, to the to the sessions or, you know, you talked about really bringing in a public health aspect to this, especially given the book that you recently wrote. Um, and so curious to, to hear if you have uh, um, if you have any thoughts, or if you want to invite uh, additional speakers to, to join the sessions in that way, our, the participants would um, be able to connect and hear from other perspectives as, as well. You want to answer you want to that, Lisa? Sure, okay. sure. Um, the, the short answer is no, we haven't scheduled um, outside lectures. Part of the reason for that is that most of what we're going to be talking about is, um, is established climate science. Uh, it's not um, di different approaches, <laughs> different hypotheses from different individuals. Um, although we'll be talking about current events, this is not uh, the current events of, of research, <clears throat> which would really facilitate more. And uh, unfortunately, we just don't have the time also to take on the, the impacts community. I think what would be very valuable um, 
say in a in a longer, more formal course, would be to have the impact side as well, have the health community, the disaster risk reduction, um, water, et cetera. Uh, but we just, you know, in 15 hours, we, we want to cover the science. Great, thanks. Um, so I, I think there's been a, a few comments about sort of schedule. Um, I have post, I put into the chat box, the link to the direct page for the workshop, which has the exact sort of schedule and, um, and the dates that you'll, you'll want to keep in mind. So basically it's Tuesday evenings um, with one session being one hour and all the other sessions being two hours and it'll be weekly and it will start March 9th um, and end April 27th. Um, and as I said at the beginning, um, all of these will be online um, and any readings, um, there will be some readings that the instructors would share. Um, and sort of no official homework or transcripts from, from Columbia. This is really um, a professional learning opportunity um, that will uh, help you supplement. Um, and like, I think Simon made, said this very uh, well, which is um, that the participants won't necessarily have science training or knowledge or background as sort of their undergrad or graduate, um, but they're expected to, to know how the climate system works in their role of work or they're interested in pivoting to a career where they will need to know how the climate system works. Um, and I think this is just a, a great opportunity um, to, to do some professional learning um, on top of, of work and, and careers, if, especially since we're all home for the sort of foreseeable future. Um, so I, let me see, let me just double check. Um, There's so, a recent question for you, Cassie. <laughs> yes, so that is a so scholarship. So we do have reduced rates available. Um, I'm gonna be reaching out to everyone who's uh, attended the session today and I will let you know what those um, rate options are. Feel free to also just email me. Um, you should all have my email because I sent you the Zoom link for today. Um, so if there are questions um, about our reduced rates, about our schedule, um, about the certificate that you get, you'll get afterwards, any of the logistical questions about the workshops, feel free to just contact me. Um, and I, as I said, I'll be following up with everyone uh, with a recording of this as well as additional information. So we'll, we'll definitely uh, share that. Um, all right, so I definitely want to keep to time. I, was, um, I know people have back-to-back -back Zoom sessions these days. So, um, so if there's any additional questions, uh, feel free to get in touch with me. Um, Simon and Lisa, is there anything else you want to add before we wrap up? No, just to thank everyone online. Um, Clearly some people have really made quite a commitment to stay up late and join the session. Yeah. We really appreciate it. <laughs> um, and I hope to see you at our workshop in March. Yeah. Okay, thank great. Thank you both for your time as well. And thank you for, for all our attendees. Have a great evening or afternoon or late evening, wherever you are. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thanks everyone. Bye-bye.